Good morning. Look at this absolute angel in the background. She was sleeping and then I started to get ready to film and lo and behold, here she is. So today I wanted to talk about some recommendations that I would say a good set of recommendations for this time of year that sort of transition from the hottest days of summer into fall. August I do feel like is a swing month for me. The top half of August is always me grasping onto those last few moments of summer, squeezing in those last beach days. And then the very tail end of August moving into September, I fully embrace autumn vibes as much as I can. I truly am, I'm afraid to say, the most basic of basics when it comes to fall. I love it so much. I will don the plaid, I will drink all of the lattes, and fully embrace the reading in the park aesthetic. So I have a good skew of recommendations from fantasy to classics to nonfiction that I would recommend for this time of the year. Also, I did get bangs. And I'm really liking it. Last time I cut my bangs, I did not enjoy it. I don't think I got the sort of fringe kind of French style that could look messy. So I'm really embracing it now because basically even when I don't do my hair, it looks like a hairstyle. So I'm really into it. But let's get into the recommendations that I have. So true to my channel, the first set of recommendations I'm going to have are for fantasy. So the first recommendation I have is the Seanan McGuire Wayward Children series. So I do have books one to three that are just all the way up at the top of my shelves that I don't feel like getting down. So I thought I would hold this instead, but I believe book one is Every Heart a Doorway. But basically these are, there's an overarching world that we live in. It's portal fantasy. So there are children that disappear into these other worlds sometimes remain there and sometimes are spit back out. So the books kind of bounce in back and forth between portal fantasy where we are being enveloped into these different worlds. Every single one is its own sort of set of rules. And sometimes the other side of this series is children that come back from the portal fantasy, can't find a way to return and have to cope with everyday life that takes place at a school where this teacher is trying to kind of get them back into society, however that looks for those people. But all of them are like under 200 pages. All of them are great. I haven't had one miss yet, but my favorite is the Jack and, the Jack and Jill kind of spooky. They feature in a couple of stories, but the Jack and Jill world was definitely my favorite. It was like a cool mix of Jack and Jill slash Frankenstein. It was really great. The next fantasy I would recommend is the Farseer trilogy. This is a no brainer for me. This is a series I absolutely loved. This specifically is for that transitional time of like those days that you're stuck inside. Maybe it's a little bit more rainy than it was before. The weather's a little bit more crisp and chilled and I just think this is the perfect fantasy for this. This does take place for a majority of the time in a more warm climate but it does have little bits of colder climates um, integrated into it but in this one we're following Fitz who is the bastard son to the king as he is trained to be a royal assassin and it is so full of political intrigue. It's so full of character development. Um, there's very light magic in book one, but obviously that grows as you continue with the entire Robin Hood world she created for um, this Farseer world. So the characters are great. You'll fall in love with it. It's a lot slower paced, so it's not something you're just going to want to knock out at the beach, but I really, really recommend this one. She's finally settled down next to me. This will be a surprise to no one, but I still had to put it in here. Anytime there's a hint of fall vibes, I, this is probably going to be in my recommended. And that is Babel by R.F. Kwan. I know some people call it Babel, but I've said the word Babel my whole life. I don't know how the author pronounces it, but I digress. This is a very, very light magic fantasy. Um, I would qualify it more as like a historical fiction fantasy 
RF Kwan pulls a lot from our natural histories, but at the root of this, this is a story about history, who owns history as you own the languages. It's an ode to languages itself with such a light magic element. And I think if I could suggest anything, it's just going into this a lot slower paced. I had moderate expectations. This is the second thing I read from RF Kwan, of course, reading the Poppy trilogy first, and it was so radically different that I think it took some people by surprise. It seems to be quite a polarizing read um, that people either really, really love it or DNF it. And I can understand that because it is quite slow, but if you give it a chance, you'll fall in love with Robin, who's the main character. You'll fall in love with all of his surrounding friends. It's set at Oxford. It's such like a collegiate, academic atmosphere. I would definitely recommend this for the end of August, moving back into the winter, moving back into the fall months as we head back to school or see the leaves start to change. I think Babel is the perfect fantasy read for that. So next I thought I would recommend a couple of classics. So these are not going to be anything boundary breaking, more just kind of staples that I would recommend. And first has to be Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. This is of course my Pride and Prejudice and Wuthering Heights are my two favorites because again, they're classics for a reason. And this is one I read every year when I'm leaning into fall. It takes place on the moors. So for those days, especially as summer's ending and we get those first fall breezes, I feel like those can be the sharpest types of cold because our bodies are so acclimatized to summer. And I feel like this really encompasses what that means to be like so cold, chilled, not just in climate, but in story. And it's just one of my favorites. You really can't go wrong with it. And this is my favorite edition that I own. And there's Heathcliff on the back. It's great. I love it. Next, I'm going to recommend this softly, but I'm going to recommend Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. This is one that I was polarized actually in myself the first time I read it because some of the because some of the scenes don't age well. In fact, I would say that they age so poorly. It was a little bit of a turnoff for me, but in its root of being a gothic romance, I think Daphne du Maurier does it better than most I know. And I am going to be rereading this for the fall. So I've read it twice now, but I got this gorgeous anniversary edition that I would like to annotate and do all my highlighting for. Um, but basically in this story, we're following a young woman who has a whirlwind romance with this gentleman as she is uh, the companion to a wealthy older woman. She meets this man, falls in love with him, has this whirlwind romance, they get married, they move to his estate which she had never visited before and she comes to find out she doesn't really know anything about the man she married. He has lost Rebecca who was his ex-wife unfortunately or I should say his late wife, but there's a sort of mystery surrounding what happened to Rebecca. And as the story starts to unfold, things just are not quite what they seem. So the next two I'm gonna recommend, one is kind of a speculative fiction and the other is more of a historical fiction, but they're both contemporary. Um, I would just generally recommend Sally Rooney for the late summer, early fall transition. Sally Rooney is someone who does, I think, character work better than anyone I read in contemporary fiction. And if I had to recommend any, I would definitely say Conversations with Friends, um, but also Normal People's, I, feels like, I feel like it's the most accessible and most beloved. So next, I'm gonna recommend Bunny by Mona Awad. This is the speculative fiction that also seems to be quite polarizing. I know a lot of people that upon starting it, not super into it, but as I got further and further into the story, I had a great time. And that's why I would recommend this. This is the time of year where you can dedicate some time 
to your reading. I feel like in the summer months, we want quick gratification. You want stories you know you're gonna love, something you can just read on the beach so it's a more quick read, whereas this is the time where we can start to dedicate a little bit more time to our reading, stories we need to sink our teeth in a little bit to understand, and I think Bunny definitely falls under that. We start off with a woman who is in a writing program, a young woman who's in a writing program, and she shares this small classroom with a group of girls called the bunnies and they all call each other bunny there's a sort of weird cult-like vibe to them and i think that's perfect for the fall months gearing into going into fall and into october and everything that comes with that i think this is a great transition it is again an academic atmosphere i wouldn't quite call it dark academia i've seen it labeled as that i think it leans really heavy especially towards the end into a more speculative fiction Next, I would recommend Beasts of Little Lamb by Johnny Kim. This is one I really, really, really think is undervalued. I don't see a lot of people recommend it, but I do see it on quite a few people's shelves when I watch videos. This is basically, we are following multiple perspectives, kind of multi-generational, somewhat Korea as it's occupied by Japan and all that comes with that, the poverty, the politics, the tension, um, it's just there's so much in it i really really recommend it at its root it's kind of a love story it's about how big of an impact you can choose to have and how small how small actions have larger impacts on those you love it's about familial ties it's about so much i rated it five out of five stars i really loved it but if you're looking for something like that if you're really into, you know, the Kristen Hannas and stuff like that, that tug on your heartstrings, I would really, really recommend that you give this one a chance. And then for my nonfiction recommendation, I'm going to recommend The Language of Fanaticism, Cultish uh, by Amanda Montel. This is what I really enjoyed. So this basically is just a giant research paper slash digression into the word cult and what it means and the cultish phenomenon um everybody kind of overusing the word cult what where did that phenomenon come from and not just language in general but it does lean heavily into that and i just thought it was such a fascinating deep dive where i definitely have read a lot of true crime I've watched a lot of crime stories. I feel like this takes a more academic delve into cults and those surrounding it. So I would really recommend this. I feel like it had a, hype, a lot of hype when it was released originally, but not necessarily since its release. I feel like it really died down, but I for one really enjoyed this story. And I think it is a really good mix because it's not inherently anything seasonal. It's just a really great read on those rainy days on those cooler mornings but even i know i read this in the summer and absolutely enjoyed it and learned a lot i have my annotations of everything i learned so i would definitely recommend it so that is going to be all for me today i hope you enjoyed this video and you're getting ready those that are summer girlies are enjoying those last few moments of summer and those that are a little bit of both like myself are anticipating the transition. Um, but that being said, that's all I have for today's video and I will see you in the next one.